Welcome back to part two of my 10 gallon vivarium build. And today I'm going to start working on the background and laying out the hardscape. So before we do anything, it's, you know, a good idea to have an idea in mind of, you know, what you want to do. So I've got a, had a couple pieces of uh, driftwood and I picked out this one, which I'm going to go with. And it's a pretty nice piece of wood, I think. Um, I was positioning it in different ways, and you know, one way, if I had put it in this way, I think it would look pretty good. So let me just kind of hold that up there for a second. And I thought it would be pretty cool. It's like kind of going up and give you a nice little shelf on the back. I could put some stuff up here. Maybe the frogs would sit on there. Uh, but then I realized this looks almost exactly like what I did in that vivarium. Uh, where I just have a branch sticking out on the upper left-hand side, and it's exactly what this one would be doing. And I don't want to do that. I want to do something different. <clears throat> so I'm going to be putting this one in the other way around and have it that way and look more like a root, I think. Be a little bit different. So I think I'm going to kind of go in that orientation. And, of course, the substrate... Uh, it's going to be coming up to pretty much the top of this here. So I want to raise that up. So I'm going to prop that up for a second and see how that looks. So this gives me a better idea of what it's actually going to look like in there. So you can see I've propped it up a bit. Uh, I've got it against the back wall. And I think this is going to look pretty good because the substrate is going to be filling this area. And I might raise this up a little bit and kind of have this hanging over like a ledge. And then maybe the, kid, the frogs can get, get under there. That'll just give me lots of room to plant some plants in there. And then also, I wanted to put some planters in there. So when I start doing the spray foam, maybe I'll have a planter you know, sort of facing out like this. And then have another one maybe up there. So I want to have a plant kind of coming out this way. And maybe one going out that way. And then plants all along the bottom. So I think that'll be pretty good. So what I need to do is get some silicone. And I want to stick this piece of driftwood to the back wall. And that's because when I do apply the spray foam, if any gets underneath, this stuff does expand. I don't want it moving out of place. So I'm going to just kind of keep it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and silicone that now and uh, let that set. That part is done. And I let this cure overnight. And... So it's held there firmly in place uh, with the silicone. And I'll just show you. Turn this around. And don't really be concerned of what this looks like in the back. Uh, because this is all going to be getting filled in with foam. And then when it's all done, I'm going to be painting this black. So you won't even see that. But all right, So the next step, I'm going to need to move downstairs into the basement because eh, it could get a little bit messy and I don't want to get that spray foam all over the place up here. This part's a little tricky to film uh, just because I'm not set up to uh, in a real good location here. But I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm just going to stick to the plan. I want a planner up there. I want one down here. And I'm just going to be applying the spray foam all around in here. And you don't want to overdo it with this stuff. Because it does expand, um, and you can always apply more later, so don't go too thick with it because it will have a hard time curing. Uh, but I'm just going to go fill in uh, all of this area with that. I'll be wearing some gloves because this stuff is messy. If it gets on your skin, it's hard to get off. But you don't have to be too worried about getting any on the sides of the glass um, because it does scrape off of the glass really easy once it dries. So you don't have to be too worried about that. But just kind of make like a nice, uh, you know, structure of, you know, whatever you want. And we'll be carving it with a knife afterwards uh, to shape it exactly how we want it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that now, and then I'll show you the result. Well, I've run into a problem. Uh, and I probably should have just backed off uh, when I knew I had it, but it's okay. It's fixable. Um, so the can of spray foam I was using... Uh, was the one left over from the last tank that I was working on. 
And this is only my second vivarium I've made, so this is a lesson learned. Once you start using one of those cans, uh, you basically have to use the whole thing. Uh, you really can't go back and start using it again, or at least not with very good results. Uh, the neck of the uh, can was kind of clogged up, and I was able to poke it through to get it, you know, working again. And, you know, the foam was coming out, but not like it should have been. It was coming out really, really slow. And the can was pretty full. I thought I would have had enough, but um, it really wasn't coming out the way that it should have been. And so it was just kind of dribbling out, which was okay. It actually was making a pretty good, uh, like, formation there. I, I liked the way it was looking. Uh, but there just wasn't enough in there, enough pressure to really uh, force it out the way that it should have been. And although this looks really purple on the camera, uh, that is actually black. I don't know why it's coming up purple like this. That's really weird, just the way the light's reflecting into the camera, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, not the end of the world. I need to go get another a can of foam. But unfortunately, today is Thanksgiving. Everything's probably closed, so I won't be getting it today. I'll have to run up to the store tomorrow and... Uh, Get back to this. So it's a new day, and I've got a new can of foam. And I'm going to go ahead and finish what I started yesterday. And so that's as much as I was able to get done on the first can. And so I got a new can. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, finish off the area, probably put a little bit more up here. Let that dry, and then tomorrow I should be able to do the coconut fiber. <laughs> was a way different experience than the first can. I kind of wish I had set up the tripod to show what happened with, with the other one. It was just barely dribbling out of the nozzle and did not expand uh, like this one was. And I think I kind of saw what I see what I did wrong. I was reading the can and it said uh, just leave the nozzle on the can and when you want to reuse it just cut the end off. I guess it won't dry inside of the nozzle. Uh, what I had done was remove the nozzle and just left the can aside, and I believe it just all caked up inside of there, uh, rendering it pretty much useless. But don't be too concerned if uh, you put too much in. Once this cures, uh, it's real easy to cut out with a knife and shape it to how you want it. So, I mean, don't go too heavy on it because you have a lot more work to do, but if you get a little bit more than you intend it, just leave it be, and you can deal with it later. You really don't want to touch the stuff while it's wet. It's just a, a sticky mess. So I'm just going to let this dry and uh, come back for the next part. I guess part three, we'll start working on shaping this and doing the silicone and coconut fiber on it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.